you have to make choices. You have to make a decision about putting full stops in place, saying that's got to end that behaviour from other people. You've got to you've got to come away from, and I want myself to manifest this behaviour, and I'm only going to be doing it through discipline and graft, putting effort mm -hmm. in, because. We live in a, an age, and, and I've been there, we've probably all been there, where you expect everything to come easy and you're frustrated when things aren't working right for you. And, and the answer when that, when that doesn't happen is not to step away from stuff, it's to go ten times harder. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, not in central London. I'll tell you more about that in a minute, mind your business for now. Big shout out to all the regulars, 2023, here we go, with more trouble in store for the podcast. Kellervision is the app though, you can go and get that free download, iPhone, Android, for your sins, mini docs, mini mixes, full docs and podcasts, all there, a tap of an app, you know what I do. Um, we are in Blackpool. And I say that passionately because there's a lot of dons up here, but there's only one don the buck stops at, all right? In Hive, his a new exhibition, which is up and out and at him right now. A man that has history from the 80s, mid 80s onwards, from London to Manchester to Blackpool. This guy is pivotal. To, like I said, the buck stops here with this gentleman with a style all of his own. It's been forged from nothing but graft. Uh, originally the name Time One, still standing with that name with the emergence of his graph from front to back. He knows where it's at. You guys are known as T Connection 72 on the gram. It is Time One, T Connection 72. Oh, mate. What are you saying, my guy? I'm good, man. Nice one. <laughs> that was a struggle. Got that one out. <laughs> yeah, you, did it. you did that well, mate. You did that well. The breath control was exceptional. exceptional. <laughs> it's been a long time coming as well because uh, obviously, you know, we are, you know, we, we, we're still young in age of wow. creativity. We don't yeah. always want to be jumping on these things no. too soon. Oh, no, no, there's need for rush all the time, you know. That's the slow. <laughs> slow and steady wins the race, race and all that. There was a time, actually, where you were very much, I'm um, not sure about the social media thing, even that, you know, the anonymity of T Connections was very, you know, it's, it's a force. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not one for being in the spotlight or, or being a sort of public sort of figure. I don't, I keep myself to myself. I'm not, I'm not, I'm involved in, in writing and DJing and so on and art and whatever, but I'm not there at the forefront. You know, I'm not, I'm not like, hey, look, everyone, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I keep it very, very quiet, very private. I'm about making things and doing things and, and good company and doing, pushing myself, really. Mm. I'm a bit rubbish at the social side of it. I don't enjoy it too much, to be honest with you. Although... I'm more sociable with it when I've been in a long, long time. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's been good. I've enjoyed it actually. I've met some, you know, met some good people in the real world through through my sort of time on Instagram and so on, mm. and, and some some things that have come out of it, and things that are still ongoing as well. I've got I've got a little project on the go at the moment uh, with uh, my like Coa, who I've bumped into in London, had some lovely conversations with. So we've got something should be coming out in the next year or so, but. As I say, slow and steady. Yeah, race. so we'll get more into that later. <laughs> this big, is up, <laughs> big up Coa as well. I mean, you like you say, your uh, your background for decades of being part of the graffiti scene up north here, it, it stands the test of time that you know you've been incredibly sociable over the long game. Yeah, yeah. I've had the pleasure of bumping into loads of people over the years, and you know our lives have. Touch, touch one another for a very short time in many instances, but it, it's been really good to, to see all this coming and going mm -hmm. in front of me, you know, and it's, it, it's been a pleasure. It's, it's always been a pleasure to be around hip hop and, and graph and, and writing and so on. It, it, it's never, there's been some bad moments and so on, but 
that's just that's we'll part get some bad moments as well. We're going to get into all of it on this part one. Part of right? the beast, really. <laughs> that is this. You it know. just means that we can indulge and open up the open up the treasure trove of uh, of your history. If for those of you that uh, are listening and watch uh, not watching, you you you're missing out on a retreat behind us. I mean, we are in the uh, Hive Gallery. Um, in Blackpool, part of a bigger exhibition that's being held here for Tekken X, man. Uh, and behind us here are some amazing pieces of art, which it, I, I can't give it more higher compliment than it's, 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 it feels like you've literally taken what you do on wall and have doctored it to a surface that it almost, it's, it's as complimentary on canvas is, is the street, and that's that's rare, man. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I, I come from like a sort of quite traditional graffiti sort of background, tagging, bombing, streets, track sides, mm. bit of steel, buses, insides, and what have you. And but I was always interested in art, always fascinated by art, always making art as a kid. And I used to, as a child, I was fascinated with uh, civil engineering, roadworks, and buildings, and so on. So I used to draw. That from memory, or like the scenes of the guys digging in the ground and taking pipes out and stuff. So I was always interested in the street and what was going on outside, uh, and things being below the surface and so on. And infrastructure always interested me uh, from quite an early age. So that sort of interest of, of looking around me and seeing what was around mm. when when hip hop came along and, and early bits of graffiti started springing up, it was like. I've never seen this before. Brings what, everything together. Yeah, what is oh, this? Yeah. How do you do that, you know? And then gradually, sort of, I, you know, someone lent me a marker pen and said, look, this is what you kind of do. And it, and it led from there to there. And it's kind of funny, the first marker I ever used was like a pale blue Posca, a chisel tip blue pale Posca. And I'm still using them. So on sick. all these canvases that are around us now. It's beautiful, man. I love it. Something stick, you know, yeah. and, and it's stuck for quite a while. And, and there are a lot of canvases around here. Like, uh, unquestionable levels of quality content. F again, if you're not, if you're not uh, watching and listening, um, the, the detail, when you say structure, <laughs> it's almost like water meets rigid. It's like flow meets uh, structure. That's it, yeah. Well, but those are the two. Those are the two parallels. You know, they're the two opposites of graffiti. You've got graffiti, which is the wild beast, yeah. you know, running a mark, and then you've got the structure of formality of the street, and you know, rules, laws, visual laws of acceptance, and what's 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 allowed, what's not allowed. Mm. So those two sort of opposites clashing, you know, are quite. I want those to be in the paintings because. You can't have one without the other. Graffiti would be boring and dull mm. if it was just permission and, and you know, very clear and very obvious things. You know, I, I like seeing, I like making and seeing tags mm. as much as I like seeing a full colour piece. I've never sort of gone away from just enjoying bombing and, and, and seeing bombing, even though, again, gradually I've got less involved over the years in that. But that sort of wildness and... Mm. and trying to capture that as well and trying to capture it honestly in a raw way rather than making it polished and perfect and mm. you know sort of shiny because because graph life you know DJing it's not shiny all the time it's pretty rough around the edges I've had quite a, an unusual life mm. and and I want I want that sort of rawness in my work that I've experienced because I know superficial shiny you know neat things they hold the biggest lies, you know. Yeah. I, I know people Ooh. well enough. I know, I know <laughs> I'm experienced in people well enough to know, you know, uh, yeah, to know the difference between good and bad in people and, and what, what's when things are glossed over and so on and how people do it. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of quite raw in, in what I do. Dude, I've been privy to, to join you for a paint uh, and uh, be on location a number of times and... Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. A few times. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's good, and so. it's always a pleasure. I always walk away learning stuff, and, and you're very open to that. But one thing that I've noticed, which is, I guess, it's just part of your, the DNA of you, is the resourcefulness and the fact that, you know, sometimes 
you've only got like a couple of bottles of mulch and you manage to knock it all out, you know, just working with the waters, working with the inks, paints. And then, the, the, you know, if you haven't got a colour, you're like, that doesn't matter. If you haven't got a cap, it's like, oh, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? What's your theory on, what's your theory on this? And how, how do you get to that point? Having nothing, improvising, trying to find solutions constantly, not being put off, you know, try, you know, if there's no one to ask questions, try shit yourself, try things yourself. My, my first paint marker was a, a match pot, a Dulux match pot, which, you know, tags just sort of like, you know, dripping all over the place. Got sussed for doing it because I did it on the paper round first thing in the morning. Hmm. You know, all the neighbours were, com all the people on the paper were complaining. There was all this stuff everywhere so I learned well that's not really going to do the job I need to do something else I need to find something else so yeah try things try mm. it just try see if it works see if it lasts see if it's permanent see if it's not permanent mm. but yeah not having everything laid out in a, in a guidebook or, mm. or, or YouTube tutorial videos like people have now you know just, just having that sort of thing to experiment and also reading a lot about you know the example of New York and seen things in, in London where people tried things mm. and, and some things worked out. I mean, something I'm, I'm quite interested, I've always been quite interested in is, is, the, is the chemical sort of aspect, the, the alchemy of, of, of graffiti and how uh, materials are used to, to absolute maximise things lasting, you know, staining mm. power, stain and staining powder how things, who develops these things, who found them, you know, how have these things come up with? And again, through social media, I've had some wonderful conversations and shared a lot of photographs and people have come back to me and said, well, that's that, that's that combination and, mm. you know, that's that ink and that ink added together. And also, you know, in, in, the, in the 80s as well, we were experimenting with stuff. We were mixing editing ink and... Uh, barrel ink and art line inks and stuff. We were trying things. We didn't always get it right. I messed up more markers mm. trying to pour things into them and, you know, trying to nail varnish and, and paint stripper and all sorts of stuff. Put, really? put shoving all sorts in paint, I mean, paint markers in poskas and stuff, ruining them, just, just turning them to shit, really. Gloss into an empty posca. It just died, you know. <laughs> but without all I that... I love it. Without all that, I, I wouldn't be able to do this now because mm. I know all, all, my, all these are all sort of done with markers and applicators and so on, but everything's mixed in a way that suits my temperament, yeah. suits my interest in colours. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm very much indebted to, to the art of, of tagging and so on and, and writing your name mm. and finding solutions constantly and updating yeah. things and never being, you know, uh, never said, oh, that's enough. Mm. always saying what about this what about that more 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 mm. so yeah I mean still now I'm, you know I, I constantly look on, online and you know at different sort of applicators and markers and things that are available and you know would the, is this going to be of use to me you know can I adapt to that can I try that you know it's all about finding new things ne never never being satisfied really mm. uh, always wanting to push myself it's almost, it sounds to me, it's a combination of almost like a, a scavenger meets, um, uh, meets mad scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to have that sort of that lust for learning uh, and, and wanting to upstage yourself, as well as, you know, the rest of the world, you know. Yeah. You've, sort of got, you've got to have that, that desire in you, I think. It, it's not always, it's not present in everything and, and, and it's not present in you all, all the time. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Taking it back, we have to go back because, um, as you mentioned within that, uh, the, the, those accounts there, you, you have got history for days uh, and uh, archives for decades of UK graffiti, full stop. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've been, I always, I've always taken photographs, I've always travelled, uh, I haven't got all the photographs I've taken. And I've also, I used to trade a lot of photographs many years ago as well. Uh, and I used to buy magazines, I used to get magazines from New York, uh, Phase Two's mag, uh, which had a massive impact Huge. on me. yeah, I bet. You know, because it, it's all about style and yeah. 
defining style and uh, you know what what is the real true visual impact of, of graffiti and, and, and the lasting power of it and its connection to to art and creativity throughout history. You know, mm. we've, we've a massive tradition of writing on things mm. uh, historically, uh, signing our territory, mm. uh, illustrating our lives. It goes back a long time writing mm. on walls. It's nothing new, really. And we, we're living in the modern medium of it and we're doing it with modern tools and we're doing it in a modern light. But it's pretty, it's pretty primordial, primitive sort of thing to be, to be involved with, really. Mm. You know, just like dancing outdoors to bongo drums. Mm. It's been around a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hell of a long time. Just reinterpreted with a generation that moves forward. Yeah, totally, totally. It's all of that. It, it's been... It, it, you're definitely connected to something that goes back a long, long time. You know, it isn't. It didn't just turn up at the end of the seventies, beginning of the, sorry, uh, end of the sixties, sort of beginning of the seventies. It's been there a long time. Like you say, it's just constantly sort of reevaluating, reinventing itself mm. because humans do repeat things. You know, mm. historically, we, we do do the same things through the generations and mm. so on. And yeah, to be part of that's quite. To realise you're part of it as well is quite a beautiful thing. Mm. But a lot of people just think, well, I'm, I'm doing this now and it's never been done before, it's new. And it's not really, are It's I? not new. No. Does that jade you as you get older? Like, you understand that actually this is part of a repeated perf- um, pattern of... You could almost, like, pinpoint when it happened in the yeah. mid-'80s. Does, it, does that leave you a little bit, um, uh, yeah, jaded? No, because I'm still learning things about it now. Good. I'm still I'm still picking up things and I'm still sharing bits of information about music or some old pieces or something or other every mm. week. Mm. You know, I have a conversation with someone again through social media about, oh, have you heard this tune? Do you recognise this? Didn't they produce that? Oh, look at this kind of paint. I don't remember that. Did you have one of them? Mm-hmm. Did you ever use that? And and it's quite. It, does that? quench for, for, for that interest never goes isn't that so curious why that is it, even now like you, you, I, I often get these moments and I'm like why am I still into that yeah, yeah, yeah. why is it why does it still flick my switch in the way it did when I was like 17 or 18 I, I can't under, I, I, I'm the same I, I can't I, I can't explain I never thought right that all these years later I'd still be doing it. I'd still be involved. It'd still have all of that same interest. I, I can't explain that, but there's something... There's obviously something in it. I mean, I could, I could talk about hours, what it, what it could be. Do you think it's the emotional side of it? I mean, you yeah, know, without it's delving... Because without going too deep into it, you know, you've, you've gone through some health, emotional, turbulent times in your life, as, as suggested at the top of the podcast. It hasn't always been, you know, exhibited displays of, you know forward-thinking art, it's always... There's been a lot of things that yeah. have got you to this point. Yeah, yeah. And I think... I think going through so many bad things and things that were out of my control has made me more resolute and has made me more resolute about valuing the things which have kept me distracted and kept me from sinking deep into that mire of problems and not get not being able to get out of that Maya. Mm. Uh, because you can be consumed by the bad things that, that happen to you and it can be endless. It can be just a how does how do you how has art allowed you to defer from that? To to, to prevent you you know, a lot of people go through things in different ways and have different results. Yours seems to be a lot more creative driven and positive turning it was a choice you have to make choices you have to make a decision about putting full stops in place saying that's got to end that behavior from other people you've got to you've got to come away from and i want myself to manifest this behavior and i'm only going to be doing it through discipline and graft putting effort mm-hmm. in because we live in a, an age, and, and I've been there, we've probably all been there, where you expect everything to come easy and you're frustrated when things aren't working right for you. And, and the answer when that, when that doesn't happen is not to step away from stuff, it's to go ten times harder. Mm-hmm. 
and, and, he, and even when that's not working, you go 10 times harder again. And you end up in a place that's quite lonely, but you're on that plateau and nothing, those things that were in your way at one point, they're not touching you anymore. Those people, those things can't come close to you. And that's, that's when, you know, you get to that state of everything around you is what it is. Mm. And, and you kind of like, you're not untouchable. That's, that's not what I mean. I'm just, I'm saying you kind of, you're on a plateau where, where very few things are coming to meet you because mm. you're doing it your own, your own way. You, you, you develop a, um, a strength in the resistance. The, 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 in fact, actually, let me reword that. You, like you say, you keep hitting plateaus and ah, it's not working. Okay, do it again. Oh, that's kind of working. Oh, it's nearly working. But each time that resistance, mostly in your head, is pushing you forward to, to get it. You build armour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You get stronger and stronger. And, and then so when the, when the bad times come back, and they always do, you kind of like, you've got another layer. You've mm. got another layer. You've got another layer. And you've also, I think that the beauty about my situation was that because I had constantly something to show mm. for what, what I was doing and for my time, you, you, it gives you a sense of value to yourself because you've, you've shown what you've done. And I think that's a really important thing for men mm. and women as well, but particularly from my own experience being a man and being around other blokes, is that we need to see results. Mm, we fucking do, bro. And, and, and that, can be, that can be as simple as digging a ditch. Yeah. Labouring, yeah. Labouring. It, it can be a very basic sort of task or it can be something very sophisticated. We need to see results because when we yeah. don't see results, we feel futile, we feel pointless, and we feel empty. Mm. And then we get the demons creeping. Yeah. You know, and again, you know, we, we fall into drinking, we fall into drugs, we fall into things making, you know, those highs that we would get from achieving stuff, they come from abusing ourselves. Mm. And, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm very much about trying to make, make you know, have, have something visual to show for my existence. Yeah, because, you know, the creativity, the validation that graffiti gives people, particularly in, more so now online, you know, it, it means, it means a, um, a full stop in doing something and getting, like you say, the result, the reward. The, the feel of that, that, that validation, especially mm. the fulfilment of creating a piece and it getting the green light is yeah. something else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's, and it's, a, it's a great community. Graffiti is a wonderful community. For, yeah. for all its chaos, mayhem and everything, there's some beautiful souls out there. It really, it really is. is. It really and, is. And just some of the conversations I've had. And I think, I think one of the things that I get over the years, that I've had over the years, is that people always think Graffiti writers talk about graffiti. Mm. Now, I can tell you now, most of my time talking to graffiti writers, we do not talk about graffiti. We will talk about anything but. <laughs> Actually, especially after a cup of drinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the shit we talk about mm. is not what we do. Mm. We're not talking about nozzles and mm. who's beef with who and, 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 oh, have you seen that line there and all? Mm. I mean, do we, I do have these conversations with some people and so on. Yeah, but, it's like, that's like... 55% of it. Yeah, <laughs> There's another half, but it really isn't. Yeah, it's anything. It's food. Yeah. It, it's our girlfriends, our, our wives, our, mm. our kids, you know, our, our, what book we've read, uh, what, we, what we're looking at, what we're listening to, uh, you know, what the weather's been like, you know, oh, did you hear about so-and-so? Oh, yeah, mm. you know. It, it, it's, it, we don't actually spend a lot of time talking about mm. craft. And you, you get this, you, you, you find this sort of when you when you bump into these sort of beef scenarios and stuff and you'll run into these people that have been lying in your pieces or something or, or whatever and they think that it's all about them and I'm like I didn't even notice pal mm. Mm. I'm like all oh, right oh did you you oh you lined a piece well what about the other 40 I did this mm. year mm -hmm. you missed all those mm -hmm. you know and, work, work rate yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it's kind of like people I mean, it's become worse and worse. I've seen people put... Their whole sort of graph existence is, is about lining people, putting ink tags through pieces, and it's kind of like, is that it? Mm. Is that all it is to you? And these people always fall away. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. Some of the people that I think about of, you know, only even a few years ago, 
You don't hear much of. No. It's funny that. Yeah. It's a shame because, you know, they, they start on the back foot. Yeah, and, yeah. and it, it, it could have been... The thing is, graffiti accepts anyone. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. It, it's not a... You don't have to be from a certain background or a certain, certain anything. You can be anyone. You're mm. respected by the amount you do, where you do it, and how you do it. You know, and also, you know, 50% of your reputation, like anything, is based on the people you associate yeah, with. Yeah, that's right. You know, so if, you, if you're an arse and you hang around with dickheads, then you kind of get excommunicated and, and end up in a very small circle of people who mm. are all pretty much the same as you. Mm. And, and it's quite a dismal ending, really. You just fade out like a, you know, mm. like a dying match. It's, it's quite grim, really. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But no one, you know, again, to, to gain that longevity, you've got to put a lot of effort in. I mean, there's some, there's some people, you know, British graffiti, there's some amazing people that have done yeah. amazing. And there's, there's people out there that have done thousands more pieces, done loads more stuff than I've ever done, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself up there. I've been there for a long time, but I'm not some big ego, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just as happy to see other people painting as, as see you know, my own stuff. Yeah. I, I've got a massive love for, you know, right, just, again, riding the lines. Yeah. Just clocking stuff. I love that too. <laughs> just, just it's part of the writer's DNA, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Walk, walkman on, tunes on, travel car, well, it's not really a travel car nowadays, is it? But, you know what I mean? Just, just milling around. Mm. Got, again, looking at graph, seeing graph, writing, you know, actually doing graffiti, Looking for breakbeats was just as mm. important. Mm. Looking for looking for obscure twelves was yeah. just as important. It was all part and parcel. You know, I come from that generation where, when you're a writer, you, you, you're sort of into having decks as well, and, mm. and you, you you collect music and, and all that. You know, it's it's all sort of that rolled into one. And I did. I was lucky. I, I've taken a lot of photographs over the years, and mm. you know, and, and I. It's only again through social media, sort of people like. Oh, you've got a photo of that of you? Dude, I've seen you pull photos out of the bag and I'm like, bro, where the fuck did you find that? <laughs> where the fuck did you find that? Like, there's a lot of that in play. An amount of people, big up here as well, um, yes, recipes, teas. I mean, these were, these were, did to name a few, the people that I know that you were in constant communication with and, and uh, they, they recognised the, uh, the, the, the weight of your, uh, your collection and... Yeah. history. I, I was very lucky to have that, just that will to take pictures. Mm. I, I just wanted to take pictures. It seemed really exciting to me. It still does, you know. Uh, and I took photos of things that people weren't necessarily taking photos of, so a lot of tags, a lot of partially buffed things as well. Uh, I haven't got all the photos I took. I, I, I miss having... I, I remember the, the sort of... Uh, PFB versus BMB wars, like Boy. 1991 into 92, which was absolutely lawless. <laughs> yeah. It was actually a sight to be old. <laughs> Their Mets were absolutely <laughs> mullered. It was beautiful to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I always used to get off the train at, at Euston and I'd go straight to Euston Square and, you know, sort of going down those stairs, turning that corner, like, yeah. oh, fucking yeah. hell, here we go. Yeah, back yeah, yeah. on, <laughs> back on, here we go, lads, yes. Well, let's get into this, because, you know, you do have a history in London as well. You, you, were, you, were, you were straight down the, the, uh, down the M1 to, uh, uh, to London at a very early age. Let's get, let's get into that, bro. Yeah, I mean, I had, uh, I've got, I had an auntie that lived out uh, sort of Wimbledon way, uh, and... I went there once or twice, and then I had another one of my aunties uh, was a chief radiographer at Royal Middlesex. Nice. So I used to go and stay there with my gran, and also my, my gran had a lot of health problems, and she ended up in hospital London as well. So I stayed in, in uh, sort of Notting Hill area around there, and Kilburn as well at different times. So I was, from an early age, I was a fan of the underground and the city life, the city energy. You know, the, the, the trains were just, just fascinated me because mm. we'd, we'd go down, like we would drive sometimes, but sometimes we'd go on the train and then these tube trains, like, they were tiny, some of them. They were kind of quite small, like using the Bakerloo and Jubilee and stuff in the Northern Line. They were quite tiny, it was quite bizarre. Mm. I was always quite a tall kid. Mm. So it was kind of like, how am I going to fit in here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not banging my head, but everyone managed it. We all yeah, did it, yeah, you know, yeah, it was yeah. fine. 
But uh, yeah, so I, I travelled quite a few times. I didn't really see any sort of graffiti or anything or any signs or notice anything. But at the time, my early years, sort of interest in art, I was very interested in civil engineering and uh, utility works, drawing things, drawing the guys, the gas board, mm. the water board, being a nerd, asking them questions constantly, you know, mm -hmm. getting on the bike and going asking them, what are you doing, what's this, what's that? Mm -hmm. So I was always fascinated by what was going on on the street and so on and, and changes in the street fabric around me. So, uh, yeah, and then we watched... Uh, we watched uh, Bad Meaning Good. Yeah. We were of that era. Game changing doc, man. Yeah. Yeah, we were of that era that, that when Bad Meaning Good hit, it just sort of like, oh, <laughs> we need to go to London. And we, don't, we already had a mate who, who was a bit older than us, a friend of a friend that, that had travelled down to like Honest John's and so on to Labrook Grove. Mm -hmm. And he'd, he'd brought records back and brought photos back as well. Uh, of around Labrook Grove. I think I think he'd been sold some pictures by someone in London. Wow. Bit of a, I'd have to really clarify, go back to that, because mm. it's quite a long time ago, that. But he, he had some friends from around London, and I think he'd bought some photographs. Uh, so as soon as, you know, as soon as we saw uh, Bad Meaning Good, and we saw the names of places like, the stations and so on mm. it was like right well we know where to go uh and again like you know from from lyrics from songs and stuff there were certain places we knew to sort of try and home in on but uh, it was wonderful like you know the first trip down there didn't end so well like but what happened we met the legendary cold crush duke <laughs> mr foam yes <laughs> 10 quid lighter. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. Two weeks paper round money, gone. Like that. <laughs> but that's life. We, we, we knew it was a risk. Mm. We knew it was a risk. We weren't stupid kids. We were, we were council estate kids. You mm. know, I, I, knew, I knew rough life, you know what I mean? Kids being shits to each other. Mm. I, I'd had loads of that already, so mm -hmm. it was no big deal. Took it on the chin. Mm. You know, shit happens. Yeah. Uh, and that was that, really. Didn't it tell you, though? No, no. Well, I just got wise. It put a lot of my friends off because they were like, oh, why are we getting robbed? We're all the same. We're all equal and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, no, we're not. Mm. We're not. It's different levels, clearly, because that wouldn't have happened to us, you know. We were just little spotty kids from, from middle of nowhere, you know. But, uh, so what happened to them? Did they move on to other things? Yeah, I mean, a lot of my mates sort of slowly got into... I mean, a lot of mates got more and more into sort of records and so on and clubbing as we got older and then ecstasy came along. Oh, and then the rave scene and that was it. <sighs> and that, just, that just killed yeah. it, really. You know, massive, massive thing. That, was. that kind of wiped out a lot of the generation of hip-hop, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. It was quite... It was quite... Uh, it was a bit weird, actually. I didn't... I, at the time... I mean, I, I love rave music, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I, I, I really do. I've got a fair few house records from most years myself, but I was never into it. I never, I never took ecstasy. Yeah. Wasn't really into it. But, uh, yes, but I, I carried on. So after that, I, I would go out of London still on my own. But instead of, like, what, what I learned to do, and, and I recommend this to anyone, and I did this in New York, and wherever I've been taking photographs, if it, you know, go early always go early to places and where it's chilled mm. and quiet and stuff so I used to get the train overnight from Preston uh, to London get into Euston like half oh, five six in the morning yeah. straight on the little mat have a ride around go all the places which were a bit moody at times like pit and places like that just get, yeah, uh, get yeah. it over and done with early yeah on. yeah I've got like pictures of, of the pit and it's kind of like sun's not coming up yet, you know. What I mean, it's still kind of so grey, and the pieces yeah. look terrible, yeah. you know. And photo, album, you know, photo, films where I've put the, the camera through twice, you put, you know, put the film through twice yeah, yeah. and everything, ruined it. You know, there's there's as many shots like that, really <laughs> bad shots. Uh, I remember going to the pit like once around '91, and I got there, and I was like, yeah, oh, yes, got there, and everything was lined. And yet I took like three, two, three rolls of film, especially for the pit, and I was like, do you know what, sod it, I'm going to get it all lined. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? Really? This, this is what it is. Do you know what I mean? It's not pieced. It's just, it's just murdered. So I, I've got like a, all, like, all the way around, join up, 
of the pit completely destroyed, tagged all over it. Wow. All, all beefing with each other. And, and again, bits of the PFB, sort of BNB war and all that sort of stuff. Which, which was hilarious, because from an outsider, that looked really serious and, mm. and dirty. Like, but then the following year, like, so a year or two later, 91, 92, when I went down to London as a student, I got, I got a place to, to study art. I went down to the pit and uh, got there and, and there's two, two young lads painting, two, two black lads painting, and this white guy stood there, like, and I could see him, like, looking at the piece and, like, it's mere and dreff, like. I was like, oh, nice. Well, oh, nice one, lads. And there's this sort of white guy sort of huddling around, like, he's gone, you got a light, mate? And I'm like, no, I haven't, I haven't got one, pal. And he's like, ah, well, all right, fair enough. He's like, you're into all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good watching these two paint. Like, it's a bit of small talk. Like. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, one of these lads with glasses on, he's gone, hey, you got a can of black, mate, to this lad. And this lad doesn't look like a writer yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're kind of dressed with caps and hats and all this sort of stuff. And he's gone, you got a can of black, mate? And he's like, yeah, I'll go and get you one. So he says, ah, oh, come with us if you want. And I'm like, yeah, all right. And walked around the corner, got in, sort of picked up, Poked my head in his car. He's got loads of paint in there. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Oh, you know? my God. Because he doesn't look like a writer. Nothing like a writer. Doesn't make it behave like a writer. Nothing. Got back down into the pit. He's gone, oh, hang on a minute. Let me test it for you. He's done the Super Sabo throw up. <gasps> and then the Iron throw up. Come on, son. And I'm like, <laughs> is that you, mate? Pick up then. <laughs> is that you? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's both of me. And I'm like... Jesus, mate. Mm. I'm like, I just got back from Amsterdam last year, mate. I mm. says, you're all over there as well as bloody London, aren't you? And he's like, yeah. He know fuck about. Yeah, don't mess around. Like, and, yeah, yeah. and from that point, sort of became friends with Ben. Because mm. he, was, he, was he was always really interested in art mm. and I was always really interested in graffiti. So mm. there was always this two-way sort of traffic about mm. what's this, what's that, what does this mean and why does that happen like that? And he, he taught me a lot and we went on a few little missions together and... Racking paint together was a, was a fucking giggle, mate. Going, sh sh tell us some stories. Tell us some racking stories, <sighs> with with Ben or otherwise. Tell us stories. <laughs> Shirt and tie, mate. Shoes. Really? Yeah. He was like, he was like, you don't wear a baseball cap round here, mate. Don't don't look like a writer. Do not act like a writer if you want to get away with graph in London. And I listened to him. He's like, get a, get a rain mac, get some nice clothes. And I was like, yeah, all right. So I did that. And he's like, yeah, you'll do. Mm. We went out and got quite a bit of paint, really. It was all right. Again, I, I wasn't... I did bits in London. I did mm. do bits in those years. But it was only... It was just dabbling, really. Mm. You know, it was just messing around. Really didn't want to mess up mm. my place at college because it was, it was quite, quite a big deal for me. How again. long were you in college for in London? Uh, I did three years. That's fantastic, Bob. Yeah, I yeah. did a full degree. I started off at uh, Camberwell. And again, I'd wanted to go to Camberwell because of... For two reasons, really. There was uh, pride mm -hmm. in bad meaning good. Mm -hmm. When you see the pride thing, sort of a little pride clip, it shows one of his pieces, and underneath it, it says, uh, degree show at Camberwell School of Art. Now, when I went to art school, quite a few of my favourite painters, William Coldstream, um, I think Bomberg also, quite a few sort of significant British painters went to Camberwell. Mm. So I was like, Right, okay, so they've got a lot of tradition there and they've got a lot of future. Mm. I'm like, They're thinking forward as well, that's right. I'm like, that's where I want to go. Yeah. I mean, I didn't stay that long in the end because I was doing joint honours and uh, I wanted to just focus on painting. Uh -huh. I'd flopped everything at school because of graffiti. Mm -hmm. I was, like, in my school years, I was really involved with it. I had a couple of cases. Uh, got managed to get banned from all the railway bridges and property. <laughs> as part of my bail conditions. Uh, so, yeah, going, going to London, doing a degree was kind of a big deal, really. Quite refreshing to get away in... Oh, God, yeah. From the, from the restrictions that you had around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, everything had fizzled out. Rave was, was it, man. You know, mm. no one was really interested in graffiti. Uh, there was one guy, Daz, uh, Mose 120, Ray 138. We did a few bits together and we got together in London years later. Mm. as well but 
Yeah, there was just a bit of a gulf after then. Like, mm. I, again, I brought, I'd end up getting paint from London, but I bring it back here yeah. to paint here. I, mean, I did some stuff in London, but I did stuff here, you know. It was, it was kind of still like to keep some pieces here as mm. well. But uh, yeah, yeah, I had a bit of a giggle, really. It's always been fun. Because mm. it's fun. It's supposed mm. to be fun. You're supposed to be having a laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, I, yeah. I've got massive respect for people that, that take it that bit further and go that much harder. Go the distance. Because there is some... I'm not, I can't say the things I know about and the stories I hear because they're kind of quite personal, intimate, yeah. how things are achieved and so on. But... Uh, Mm -hmm. there's some there's some amazing stories behind all this this sort of business you know and it, it, it is the sacrifices and the non-linear and lateral thinking that goes into achieving some of the things in, that yes. go on in graffiti are outrageously without question I, and, and that's the thing that I think spurs a lot of people onto greater things when they utilise at a young age the um, the the utilities and the um techniques applied within graffiti is almost like I think that should be studied in, in, a, in university alone just because you, you create a robustness and a, a different way of thinking don't you oh yeah the, 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 the degrees of intelligence behind it yeah. uh, and problem solving yeah. are, are, out, are, out, are out of this world yeah. you know and again this is this is one thing you notice over the years and, and certainly from my sort of experience of getting nicked in those years, quite a few times, quite a lot of times, really, uh, were, and it's the same in skating, it's the same in BMX, and it's the game in, it's the game of music with DJs and stuff. Each generation after the, the previous one picks up on all the mistakes they made and don't make the same mistakes, mm -hmm. and they just keep learning and learning. So you now got this evolution of writers in this country and well, all over the world, which. Uh, the things they do mm. to get to, you know, the, the little shitty fence that I had to jump over to get in my yard to, to do a couple of marker tags on the side of a in the city is nothing compared to the amount of conjuring the next this generation yeah. have got to get into another a yard now. But again, it creates that agility and the the the, the armor. It's it's one massive uh, resistance exercise yeah. pushing through. Oh. That's crazy when you say that because it can be increment, it can be small, but for the for the macro, yeah, it holds yeah. the same value. Yeah, the yeah. more you push, the more the next generation will push. The more the next generation will push. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, yeah. And and some of the things I hear, some of the conversations I have, mm. are incredible. Absolutely incredible. You. The, the, the levels of intensity of, as I say, problem, it's problem solving. Mm. It, it's, right, we've got a problem, how do we fix it? We don't moan about the problem, we fix the problem. Mm. And that's like, I mean, Fuel says something quite interesting. I might not we get got Fuel. Yes, Fuel. Uh, yeah, I mean, I might, I might not get, get this completely right, but the sentiment of what he says in, ah, uh, oh, the film, the, 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 the film that's up uh, on YouTube, uh, I think the siege was doing the. Uh, um, I can't remember the bloody name of it. No, no. But he, he talks about how seeing illegal graffiti on trains gives people the power to 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 do something else, something beautiful, and to push themselves. And for me, that's always been, you know, my sort of moot point of painting. You know, I'm choosing a much easier option: painting on the canvas much easier than painting on a train. Mm -hmm. There's no competition between that. However, the amount of effort and energy those guys are putting in to achieving that, that's like a moniker of, of, of the bar. That's where the bar is set. Mm. If, you, if people are doing going that hard, then you've got nothing to worry about. No, what you shouldn't even whine about, oh, I've not got any inspiration for a canvas. I haven't got, <laughs> you know, it's like these people are sat. Yeah. All night, three weeks on the trot, yeah. clocking. On a bush, yeah. You know? Watching the trains. Just yeah. watching. I've been there, I've done that. I've, I, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a yard master, far from it. But I, I know the drill. I know how to pull things off. I've pulled things off. Not a lot, but the effort these people go into is outrageous. Yeah. And, 
you know, it, 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 it's very wholesome to see mm. people putting their mind to something like that to achieve something, you know, to achieve 15, 20 minutes of painting. Yeah, you know, it's incredible. And it might not even run. Mm. And it's been like that for years. It's, this is nothing new what we're talking about. You know, it's, it's been like this for a long, long time now. But the stuff that I see and, and I get shown photos of, it's just incredible, you know. Mm. Absolute every credit to people. Yeah, 100%. That are pushing it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so, uh, as we know, you know, with, with Blackpool, there are very similar people like yourself that have been there from the jump. Can you give us some names of people that we should be talking about on podcast? People that are, were real trendsetters, uh, pioneers up here in the Northwest? Well, I mean... Alongside your dear self, of course. <laughs> there's, there's two people really come to mind. Uh, one of them isn't with us now, and that's Era. 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 Ian. Yeah. Uh, bless him. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah, Era. rest in peace. You know, I only, yeah. he, he, he passed only in the last year, I believe. Yeah. And... Uh, not he wasn't attached to any sort of graffiti sort of scene or anything. hasn't been for, hadn't been for a long time. I don't know a lot about the later years of his life, uh, but Ian was was someone. There was two people. Ian there was Era, who was who also wrote Rays mm -hmm. uh, before he moved to London, and there was I say, and they were a couple of years older than us, but. We'd been writing a couple of years longer than us. Now from Barrow in Furness, and Barrow's just up the coast. It's quite away from here uh, by road or rail. And they used to come down to Blackpool like everyone did. Like all the Manx used to come here, yeah. and they used to leave tags and so on. And we used to duel it out a little bit, crossing each other out. And within a year or two, we'd, we'd bumped into each other just through fluke, uh, by you know by fluke, because that's. That's how, you, that's how you met writers. It was just fluke. By chance, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just purely by chance. And eventually you're trying to get some phone numbers and stuff. But those two were absolutely incredible, mm. instrumental. In, Amazing. They, 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 we, we were kind of ahead of them for a year or two. And again, as I say, because of what was going on in Graph at the time, because of raving, because of girls, because of drugs, you know. Life stuff, you understand. Yeah, just normal shit, really. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> the, the, thing, the pitfalls we all have, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those guys went just went so hard and and mm. did astronomical amounts and uh, yeah every credit to those two. That's amazing. So yeah, uh, massive love to to Era Ian. I only knew him for like a year or two. I only met him a couple of times, mm. but we had no idea what he was going to go on to do in, mm. in London and so on. And he mm. absolutely destroyed it. Mm -hmm. he, he was uh, he, to this day again. Same before, like I'm still, you know, I'm still coming across new pieces by him that I've never seen before. Yeah, that's bonkers. Yeah, I know what you mean. And, and especially it, in recent, like you say, this year. Yeah. I'm seeing the contributions and that quiet. <sighs> yeah. You know, all the amazingness that, that he. Yeah, I, I thought. I mean, contributed to. I learned a long time to go, a long time ago, never to say I've seen all that person's work. Oh, I know all their records. Mm. You don't. Mm. You never do. It's, it's you know. But, but recently, since we found out that he's passed, and quite a few people have been sort of giving up a lot of photographs That's and stuff, right. so it's been really good. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so there's those two guys. They did. They, they were. They were immense. There's a few local lads as well. We had our own little crew and everything, and we were we were just taggers really. Mm. That's that's what we started in markers, trying out with spray cans and stuff. You know, nicking different sorts of paint. You know, sleeving stuff bollocks and stuff, anything really. We were pretty small, fry, mm. amateur, just fucking around really. We weren't... It's kid stuff. <clears throat> kid yeah, stuff. yeah, it was fun. It was being a kid. It was being a youth. You know, it was being a, a, a young person. But you also said, um, and this was just before we started recording, there was, there was a, <coughs> obviously Piccadilly Radio, Manchester, was, it was a big influence uh, over here. Yeah, yeah. sure. <clears throat> I mean, the thing with Manchester was that uh, we had, because we got the Pleasure Beach and all the arcades and the piers, <clears throat> we've always got tourism. Yeah. So we had sort of the young people of the North West, mostly Mancunians. <coughs> Excuse me. It's all good. <coughs> oh, God. Take your time. No rush here. Mm. This is part of life struggles, you understand, people. <coughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, what am I 
bugged me up, say. I get so choked up in my throat. Ugh. All good, brother. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, Manchester was, was really important to us. The people of Manchester were, were really important because, again, sort of through, again, through bikes and BMX and stuff and just being interested in playing out like kids did, I started discovering tags and so on mm. and seeing, you know, tags between the train stations between Blackpool North and Blackpool South along the promenade and all the shelters and so on at mm. stations and so on. And it started to sort of have something in common between the tags I'd seen on the Rocksteady crew sleeves and all these sorts of things. These little trickles of mm. what, what graffiti was. The, mm -hmm. the little tags in the David Toot book, which, which a mate had. You know, there was, there was little things showing us the way. Uh, so I used to copy, and there's, I think there's a few bits of this on my, on my Instagram page. I used to copy, take a notebook out and copy the tags to learn how to do them. See... It's so important it's to do the fundamentals. Yeah, right? and learning how to do stars, you know, the little loop stars and mm. things like this and, you know, putting incorporated after your tag and copyright and, you know, <laughs> all these all stars with, with, you know, rings round and, you know, sort of lines, squiggles, a line at the top, line at the bottom. Really kind of like a bit over the top, really, sort of wild style tags, which for... That, if I could get any photographs or any era of graffiti... I would love to... I did have a few, but we all got taken. I, I would love for those tags that I saw, 80, late 84, 85, 86, 87. They were just before things became really homogenised and stylized, and we had sort of national sort of movements in, mm. in tag styles and so on. Things were pretty wild and quirky. Uh, mm. and For formalised, like you say, put into... the the. the Rightful positions. Of, yeah. This is what we look like as a UK, this side of the UK or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Because no one had, everyone had the energy, mm. but no one had that, this is how you do it direction sort mm. of thing. There was no books. There was no, there was no one person who was handing things down. But hold on one second. I, I just need to go, just to refer back to this exhibition and what's going on here across January at, um, uh, at, uh, Hive. Hive. Is, is your art, your... Uh, I don't for a second feel like you've compromised at any point in what your style is. To people that are into that, the more London hardcore stuff, they'd be like, well, that's, that's not how we've been brought up on graph. You've managed to retain a level of standard and style. I don't think you fell into a... a, 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 a a response to trend. I don't feel like you've filtered your thing through to conform at all. No. No, that was a choice. Well, it was partly a choice and it, and it just wasn't an option. Yeah. What is the point of following other people? Uh, this is one of the things about social media. When I started to learn about social media, people started to say to me, oh, I'm following so-and-so. Oh, I follow them. Mm. And I was like... Why would you follow anyone? Mm. What follow? What do you mean follow? Mm. You're a disciple, <laughs> you know, really literal sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you know, it's just the Bible. You it's know, your problem, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it, and I understand it now. I was, mm. I was wrong. I was, I was interpreting it wrong. But I just believe in being distinctive and having integrity and, and expressing yourself and the good things and the bad things. So, yeah, yeah, it has to be really unique and individual. Yeah, you said something before we jumped on, which was with regards to something, going to New York and um, experiencing what you had, research, and you, you found um, graffiti writer Rev out in, the, in New York. He had, a, he had a pretty good theory on environment and bringing your A game to something. Yeah. Well, it was, it was through a magazine, an interview I picked up, but I saw a lot, as I bought this magazine from Junk, from Scrapyard, I actually was seeing a lot of his stuff and I was seeing a lot of his subway mm. stuff as well mm. and I had a bit of a peek in the tunnels, a bit mm. of a wander around. Uh, actually, that's not a joke because I did see some peak stuff as well, VIC really? and all that. Yeah, <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't intended, yeah. but yeah. But yeah. No, but, intended, yeah. Yeah, the... Mm. the Two things in this Rev's res interview were, were the spot tells me what to paint. Now, as a bomber, 
as a writer, as a street writer, that's always present mm. because you always need your tag or your throw up to fit the spot that you're writing mm. in. But I sort of adapted that to piecing as well. And that idea of sort of being spontaneous and fitting in with the surface and the mood of the day. And again, I, do, I didn't always have loads of equipment, loads of writing, loads of painting stuff and everything and, and improvising. So if I didn't have all the right tools, I would, you know, the spot told me what to paint. If it was a smooth wall, I could use certain emulsion that would, you know, look like spray and so on and, you know, block things in, in, in different ways and just try things, experiment all the time. So, yeah, revs. It, you know, the spot tells you what to paint. The moment tells you what to paint. The moment. And would you say with the canvases, that's actually the, 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 the jewel in the, uh, the activity is that you, you react to an emotional call of what your day's doing, where you're painting it, things like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I imagine so. It, it, it is of the moment. And you've got to be, again, with painting, you can carry on painting on a canvas forever. And unlike a wall where you've got to come away at some point mm. for whatever reason, you've got to have that moment in the canvas. You've just got to go, nah, that's it. I've done that. That's ended. You know, come away from it. And something else Rev said as well in the same interview, he's really interested. And he said, he said, he says, only hang around, only be around other tens. Mm. Only be around people putting, be a ten, Put, put a massive amount in, of, of love into what you're doing and concentration, but do not be around sevens, sixes, fives. If you can't be around anyone who's on your level, don't be around anyone. And that's a harsh thing yeah. to cut yourself off. Yeah. And people think you, you've been spiteful or nasty or exclusive, and it's like, no, 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 I've got to stay on this level. I've got to stay I, on the tens. I, I, can't, I can't drag myself down, you know what I mean? I can't keep lowering myself... Mm. to sort of being stuck in the same place all my life. Mm. You know, I don't want to be a big fish in a small pond. I want to swim out and, and try, you know, again, not, be, not, not particularly to be a big fish elsewhere, but I want to be around and talk to people mm. who are as dedicated as I am and, and on that sort of level. And there's plenty of people I chat to who we do completely different things, but we've got that mutual respect for the amount of effort and love we put into our, you know, our things. Contends. Yeah, so roll with, roll with people that are dedicated and, and mm. not necessarily roll with them, but those are the people you want to communicate with and spend time with, you know. And as a lot of people I chat to, you know, we, we do quite different things. However... The tens are there. Yeah, the tens are there, mate. You've got to be... You, you can't be getting dragged down. Because people want that. People want, want you on their low level mm. and, and low vibration and all that. And it's like, nah, I'm not doing it. Not doing it. Being there, not staying there. I passed through that. Because you're always moving, mm. if you want to be. But you're here. I'm here now. <laughs> what beautiful sentiment. Ten conversation on 2023 New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Oh, yo, check it. Before we go, we have to do some shout-outs because I know you've got some shout-outs yeah, inside the place, yeah, yeah. my brother. Tell, tell me what it is, you know. Yeah, Here run we them go. Off, run them off, son. Right, so it's one of my people in Blackpool. Uh, Shout-out to DSC, to Kane, to Garms, Moody James, Tony Ark, Sam, Cousin Ben, Ray138. Oh, uh, tight. My special shout-out to my good friend Warren as well. Uh, Liverpool, um, Beta, all at Zap. <laughs> uh, to Manchester, Onik, Dudley, Tech One, uh, Nick Killer, uh, Chester as well, Dave Vets especially. And oh, Czech. tight Vets, my guy. Yeah, oh, and to uh, all the London lot and the South lot, to Scar, to Rare SMT, uh, mm -hmm. to Fuel, uh, Siege, here, Rust, can't say Rust without Chop, yeah. to PIC, to Grand, mm -hmm. uh, to Doze, Jet, Syme, Abel, Drefos, thank you for the advice over the years, man. Uh, to Mr. Test Press Gale, Lee, uh, to Dave Van Vinyl, uh, to Mark up in Scotland, to the Wax Nerds crew, Re, uh, IBS, uh, such a pleasure knowing you all those years ago, mate, and Chum 101 as well, who I was at college with. Uh, shout out to Kedster as well, mate, and also Dr. Adam Evans out there as well. 
To think you didn't know the lineage, now you know the deal. Fucking come on, time one. <laughs> Hi, guy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are like that Killer Keller podcast, yeah? Only dealing with the dons. And if you're in Blackpool, you know what to do. Get to the hive. You've got the period of time. You know what time it is. Come and get some art. See the exhibition and be a part of the scene up here. Big shout out to the guys that are in Blackpool. All my crew up here. Uh, we are like, it was out of fashion. Crime don't pay, but neither did they. Time will tell you. What was the one? What did you Crime say? doesn't pay, but the hours are good. <laughs> the hours are good. <laughs> you know what it is, man. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. 2023 is upon us. You stay lucky, people. Peace. Just like that. Yeah.